I enjoy, I rather enjoy playing fantasy and betting on this stuff and, and getting into it. So I hate that it's over, but alas, it must end. Uh, and so we have to dive into what, what we've been talking about, the waiver wire. So if you just give me a minute, let me get my uh, notepads ready. Let me get my recording <laughs> devices. Uh, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> David, with, oh, oh, you leave now? You sit here and say, how about the Cowboys all day? But then, <laughs> yo, yo, so Don't hey, do it, quick. Sid. Don't do it, Sid. <laughs> Sid and I are recusing ourselves from waivers this week. Yeah. Ash and Shiloh are going to come and give you their picks along with Sean. <laughs> I mean, look, I could do report cards. Uh, a week ago, you guys talked about Ronald Jones. He definitely <laughs> worked out. <laughs> a look, wow. look, looking at looking <laughs> at looking at Sean and John's matchups was our our report card. There you go, folks. If you listen to us, you won. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. That's a testament to you guys. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, report card. I'm just going to start off with. Uh, Ash and I's favorite uh, favorite moment of the show for this week: Antonio Gibson thirteen point eight versus David Montgomery twenty three point six. Montgomery is still leading the way. He is uh, he is one more week than uh, the Gibson has. Uh, Ash and I continue to be right. Uh, moving on there, uh, Sid gave you Duke Johnson uh, for some reason. I, I mean. Obviously, Wada blew up in that game. Um, they got Gas uh, Gaston's back in there, and uh, and Duke didn't do much. However, Ronald Jones uh, gave you sixteen point one. Uh, both Sid and I were way up on Craig Reynolds, uh, but unfortunately, after the show, before that game started, uh, Jamal Williams did come back, so Craig didn't do much. Um, he would have had an amazing game, and uh, and I might have beat Sean. Anyway. Yeah. Might. The real, the real waiver pick for this week, uh, obviously, uh, you know, Rojo, Duke after that huge performance the week before, Craig Reynolds going in solo, uh, Justin Jackson absolutely went off. Yes. Um, yes. 34.2 points. As you saw, folks, both of the teams advancing to the championships uh, in both of our leagues rostered Justin Jackson. He carried both of those teams to victories. Oh, uh, then uh, I'm on Ross St. Brown, 26 points. Uh, you were given the choice between Perryman and Tyler Johnson with all of the issues uh, that they were having with their uh, their uh, skilled players over there. Uh, Perryman gave you 12.8. Uh, Johnson did put up a zero. However, I do believe because um, A.B. played and mm-hmm. then uh, uh, I believe they had – were they were they missing anybody else? Obviously Evans was gone. Yeah, and Godwin and Fournette. No, I don't think anybody else besides that. Ah, uh, Brait. Brait was also in the conversation. Yep. Uh, he put it. He put up a nine point one. So, you know, not not much there. Uh, Kansas City was having the exact same issue. Uh, so, uh, Blake Bell, Hardman, and Pringle uh, were all uh, choices he had to make. I hope you avoided Blake Bell. Hartman gave you 12.1, so not too bad. Pringle went off 25.5. So those were some tough decisions, um, you know, with with third and fourth string players coming in to take over for guys on the COVID list. Um, Like I touched on last week, uh, having the backups to your players can be dangerous uh, in this COVID time uh, with numerous, numerous players going down on the same team. So uh, it, it was, it was a rough decision. Um, Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, was also available in uh, almost 60% of leagues. Still, uh, he gave you 14.7. Uh, so that's everything we gave you last week. Uh, Tyler Hunley did not end up playing, so that was a wash at quarterback. Uh, he was absolutely uh, sitting over ball tie on that. Uh, the guy would have balled, but there you have it. Yeah. And next, for the moment we've all been waiting for, <laughs> Sydney's waiver wire. Here we go, Sid. I'm all ready to go. Here we go. Don't all do right, it, Sid. So we'll start Don't at quarterback. So at quarterback, I got for you is Trey Lance with Jimmy G 
getting busted up in the hand. Trey Lance should get the start. And I like his running ability, like like with Taysom Hill and the other running quarterbacks. When it comes to fantasy, if you got if you run the ball, quarterbacks are definitely higher for that. So I like Trey Lance a lot this week. Here we go, the fun part, running backs. All right, I got four of them for you. So we'll start with uh, – I don't even know how to say his first name. Dare. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't going to try either. Agumba Wale is the last name. Is it the Lions running back? Yeah. Agumba Wale is. is the I'm Jaguars just, running gonna, back. Okay. I'm just going to yeah. call him D-O-G. D-O-G. There we go. He's, he's, he's the O-G. He's, yeah, I'm, even gonna, I'm not going to butcher that man's name like Sid just did. It's Ogumba Wale. Check yeah. me. I know how to say the last name. It's the first name I don't get. There anyway, you go. Uh, <laughs> James Robinson being down. He's the guy. He's filled in nice. He went off. He had a nice game. So uh, if he gets a bulk of the touches again, he could definitely be worth a start. Uh, more injury news with Miles Sanders breaking his hand. Boston yeah. Scott steps in. He's going to get those goal line touches, which is what I thought was going to happen two weeks ago when I told you right, that, Sean. Right. But <laughs> now Sanders isn't there, so it's got to be Scott. So yeah. he should be available. I like him a lot. These These other two. They're technically backups, but they're going to be in split carry offenses, so I like the chances. Uh, Derek Gore in Kansas City uh, with CEH down. Daryl Williams is also there and should be the starter, but Derek Gore seems to get look good when he gets in there, and he's had good games when he gets the touches in the past. So he's going to be their third down back, and uh, I think he's going to steal some goal line work. So I like Derek Gore. And then the other one is Keyshawn Vaughn. You uh, – like I'm saying it right, Nathan, right? Agumbo Wale? That's how you say that last name. I'm pretty positive. Uh, anyway, Keyshawn Vaughn, the other one in Tampa Bay. He worked yeah. off that big 50-yarder. Yeah. So he's splitting time with Rojo. I know Bruce Arians, I feel like, is not a fan of Ronald Jones. He's hmm. there as the backup. When Anytime he fumbles, he pulls him for the whole game. So quick. Uh, and Rojo has a history of that. So it's very likely Keyshawn Vaughn can get a, get a good chunk of carries here. And he – Looks like he can do it. So those are the four running backs I got. Uh, as for wide receiver, uh, I like Isaiah McKenzie with Gabriel mm-hmm. Davis and Cole Beasley still being out with COVID because yes. they're on backs. They're automatically – well, you got to pay attention because now the NFL is talking about changing the rule to only five days mm-hmm. if you're on backs. So exactly. they might be back. If they come back, I don't like Isaiah McKenzie, but if they both miss again, Isaiah McKenzie should have a good game. Um, and then the other one, uh, Josh Palmer for the Chargers – with uh, Mike Williams going to be out because of COVID as well. And I think the uh, their other rookie got hurt. Um, I can't remember. Guyton. Guyton. Lynn Guyton. Yeah. yeah, he got, yeah. He got yeah. banged up. Yeah. So Palmer should be the number two outside of Keenan Allen, and they obviously like to throw it. So I like him. Those two as receiver options. And then for tight ends, it was kind of hard. There's not a lot available. Um, I just looked at ones available, and Ger- uh, Gerald Everett is available. He seems to get looks every game, so yeah. if you're desperate and you need somebody, you don't have him. I like Ger- Gerald Everett a little bit there, um, but that was that was it. Those running backs are the main ones, obviously, because everybody's hurting for those right now. And uh, I think those are definitely startable uh, for this final week. I like that. So yeah, I love the Trey Lance start against Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dual the dual threat in that game is just, um, uh, you know, their their coaching staff just came out and said that the last four weeks of him in practice was probably the most consistent practice time they've seen from him. So he is behind the scenes and behind Jimmy G continued to improve every week. He's learning, he's getting better. Um, and if, uh, I, I mean, obviously he's a dynamic athlete. So if he can start putting together those, those, uh, the passing side of it, um, he's going to be very scary in this league. Uh, mm-hmm. I do also like Justin Fields against the Giants. I think hmm. the, the the Giants are just broken, bleeding. They've given up, um, yeah. And uh, another dual threat. Um, so we got Trey Lance, five percent of leagues. Justin Fields is only owned in twenty one percent of leagues. A lot of people gave up on Justin Fields, um, and I think he could be interesting this week. Um, now, not necessarily for this week. Uh, I I had some of the same as uh, as said the. Uh, the OG, uh, they are going. They are going. They are going against New England, so that has me a little nervous. Um, however, uh, both him and uh, the Boston Boston Scott Jordan Howard duo with Miles Sanders out, 
Uh, Rashad Penny, I think, is still a viable option going forward. Uh, all of those guys are owned in less than 10% of leagues, except for Boston Scott. He's at 13% of leagues. Uh, my interesting one, though, it may not help you this week. However, there are a lot of fantasy leagues that play through next week as well, depending on what your playoff format was. Mm. Uh, and that's Cam Akers. I would I would yeah. give up a bench I would give up a bench slot. I don't think he's going to do much this week, but I think this week will will have a, a huge impact on his usage going forward. Henderson Jr. is being out. Um, Sony Michelle's been solid for them, but Cam Akers was their guy. Yeah. So so if you're playing next week, I would go get Cam Akers and uh, and let him sit this week and just see what happens. Because yeah. uh, if you're playing next week, you're you're you know, Speak, if you're, speaking if you're in of that championship, that that could be huge. Speaking um, speaking of that backfield, um, is Henderson completely I off are. limits? As yeah, as oh, as he of is this morning. Okay. okay, he is done. Okay. <laughs> uh, receivers, if Thielen can't go, we're back to the KJ Osborne conversation. He's mm-hmm. been solid if he gets the looks. The yeah. the fact is, they just have talented guys ahead of him. Uh, so keep an eye on Thielen. I also had Josh Palmer. With, uh, with Mike Williams and Guyton both possibly being out. Uh, another interesting uh, interesting one, Elijah Moore is supposed to come back this week. Hmm. Uh, they are going. They are uh, playing Tampa Bay. So, okay. it, you know, if you need help with the position, um, he is owned in 46.4% of leagues. Out of everybody I have, he is the hardest person to get. Uh, however, if he's out there, I, I'd give him a roster spot and see how the week goes. Um, technically, he's still listed as out, but he is expected to play. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. Um, and Gerald Everett almost buried me uh, against uh, Daryl Spencer. <laughs> and uh, in our playoffs, I watched Gerald Everett go off, and I believe he has had touchdowns in three out of four weeks now. Um, really? Yeah, he, he's get he's getting lots of looks. He's getting touchdowns, uh, just very quietly uh, this year. Oh, and I, uh, Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great pick there. Uh, what what a testament to Josh Allen throughout the year. Uh, yeah, I mean, he put yeah, Dawson yeah. Knox. He put Dawson Knox, who nobody knew, on the board as one of the yeah. top fantasy tight ends for a while. Knox kind of fell off. Mm. Uh, but then, but then, Gabriel Emmanuel Sanders was balling out early in the year, uh, and then Knox kind of, kind of emerged, and then all of a sudden, Gabriel, Gabriel Davis. You know, mm. we're all talking about him, start him, start him, uh, and, and now we're talking about Isaiah McKenzie. Like we don't even know who these guys are until Josh Allen <laughs> is like, hey, but, hey buddy, want, want want to go play catch this week? Like, right. uh, you know, the the Buffalo offense has been so unpredictable this year, but. Uh, when Allen starts to form that bond with one of these guys, it usually lasts for a couple of weeks. So, uh, and like Sid said, with McKenzie and Davis both out, I'm sorry, with uh, Davis and uh, um, Beasley. Uh, Beasley, Beasley both yeah. out, and Emmanuel Sanders, uh, who's just been a no-show for the second half of the season, uh, that could be a big one for people right there. So, enjoy, folks. I hope John uh, does not come back and watch uh, watch this show. <laughs> He might be watching now, man. If, if I see anything. anyone from this waiver segment on John's roster, I'm deleting. I'm deleting the whole league. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, trust what these guys say. Trust it. Okay, four four weeks ago, I was out of the playoff contention. I was ready to give up, but then they started talking. Have. Yeah, <laughs> and I started listening, and I just said, you know what? Let me just see. Let me put some guys in there. Let's just see what happens. And here I am now. In the championship. Thank you guys. Thank you. Let me let me let me, let me applaud you two of you. <laughs> well, it sounds like Ash you. is uh Ash is just as upset that Sid and I went ahead and gave our, our waiver picks this week. <laughs> yes. There we go. Let's go. And, and and Ash, I was actually I was actually gonna bring this up as well. Um I didn't I didn't want to interrupt Sid. I do believe that you have to be asymptomatic to be eligible for that five day quarantine. I believe it's, I believe it's only for players that are vaccinated and asymptomatic with a positive test. I'm not positive on this, 
uh, but that's what I saw. That's what I saw this morning. So definitely go look up uh, the details of what the NFL is doing yeah. because it, yeah. it it could make or break your week. Um, and good luck to everybody out there who's still playing. Um, so that does not include Dylan Wright or Dalton Andrews. <laughs> Just you know, wanted to throw that out there. I'm petty. So as of as of one hour ago, they did officially change it to five days from 10 days for all COVID players who are asymptomatic, including unvaccinated. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. I say that doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, yep. So, so that, that's that. Uh, I mean. But you got to be yeah. asymptomatic. So if you're showing symptoms, you yeah. still got to sit out. But if you're asymptomatic, you can play. Wow. After wow. five days, which is massive. So pay attention. Yeah, pay attention to that. You're going to have to – and and be uh, up till the minute. I know it's not always – you're not always able to be right there looking at your thing up to the minute, but pay attention because some of these things – I don't. I can't tell you how many weeks this year I kept Kyler Murray because it said questionable. He might play. He might play. They're expecting him to play. And then right before kickoff, he, it says he's out. You know what I mean? Him and D Hop. I had them in my lineup for month, for weeks, month. I think a full a full month that they were out. I had them in my lineup, and it was right right when he got back in that I decided to take him out and put in Taylor Heineke. <sighs> That's before I started listening to you guys. All right. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. Yo, so we do have a 